Good morning, dear friends. It warms my heart to be back with you all again today. Since these midday sessions are about prayers, I thought I would share with you some spirit-driven insights into prayer, our main mode of communication with our beloved triune God. So here goes. Prayer is that timeless, eternal, profound, and magnificent gift our Lord God has given us to communicate with him, and most importantly, for him to also communicate with us. We sometimes forget this. We forget that prayer as communication with God is always a two-way process, from communicator to listener, and back from listener to communicator. But in our typically self-centered human way, we spend most, if not all, our prayer time talking to God about our own concerns and needs. And we forget to take time to stop and listen, not only to his reply back to our prayer, which may come later, but his talking to us throughout the day about things that concern him or that he wants us to know. We need to reprogram ourselves into a new receptive mindset and make time to stop and wait upon God's voice, constantly listening out for when he and what he wants to address us about. We would be deeply surprised and distressed at how often we have missed his voice because of our lack of attention to and understanding of his mode of communication. And we will become delighted once we change our mindset at how many times he speaks to us throughout the day. Listening in this context requires using all our senses because listening to God is frequently a combination of hearing, feeling, seeing, and even smelling his presence. For example, communication from God may come to us in the form of seeing his face in a beautiful sunrise, feeling his peace and calm in the soft glow of a full moon, or hearing his spirit in the early morning bird song. The smell of rain upon thirsty ground may remind us of the abundance of his love, or a scripture reading that we are given that clearly speaks to our need at a specific moment in time, tells us of his love for us and gives us his answer to us. A hug from a loved one that makes our heart leap for joy as it reminds us of our love for God. God's communication to us may also come in the form of feelings of deep sorrow or compassion we experience when we see sadness and suffering in others. The sudden urge to reach out and help someone in need or when someone reaches out to us when we are in need is God speaking to us and through us. Mother Teresa said of prayer, the essential thing is not what we say, but what God says to us. In our silence, he will listen to us. He will speak to our soul and we will hear his voice. We must learn to listen, close quote. Unknowingly, we are, we are calling on God with every breath we take. Prayer is not a once a week when in trouble and when in need or any other form of communication to God, but it is a two-way process that is, essential, is an essential part of our every second of every day. You may be inwardly thinking, oh, come off it, Robin. God doesn't expect us to be communicating with him every second. Well, let me explain. In early Hebrew language, God, or Yahweh as he was called, was represented as the four letters YHWH, without consonants, because out of reverence his name was whispered, and these sounds, Yahweh, represent breathing sounds in the Hebrew language. So that as we as we breathe in the Yah and breathe out the Wah, with every breath we take, we are in fact calling on God. Is that not a prayer? 
This means that from the moment we are born, throughout our lives to the moment we die, for every breath we take, we are unconsciously calling on God, unaware of the life-giving force this breathing gives us. Isn't that a wonderful thought? Once we appreciate these facts, then we open ourselves to becoming aware of the many other different ways that God communication takes. In Jeremiah 33, 3, God says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. When we enter into it, prayer necessitates that we approach it with the reverence God deserves. Rosemary Budd says, the closer we are drawn to the wholeness of God, the greater is our horror at our own fractures. We can only lie flat on our faces in all, close quote. But this fact should not impede us. We should always try to see prayer as a wonderful celebration of our relationship with God, that in spite of our fractures, he always welcomes us into communication with him. As we read in 1 Thessalonians 5.16, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17 says, We, we must never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances. And Ben Patterson maintains that if we pray with thanks and joyfulness, it releases us from the sin of ingratitude, which is the root of evil and rebellion against God. When we give thanks, it affirms our hope. And finally, praying in all circumstances is a defiance against the forces of the world, the dark forces of the world. God triumphs, triumphs over guilt and death in the resurrection. Finally, I want us to remember that not infrequently when we are in a rush, we enter into our prayer without the necessary reverence that our incredible God deserves from us. We sometimes forget just how indescribably awesome this God of ours is. Let me briefly share two of a multitude of examples of this enormity of our almighty God with you to bring him into perspective before we begin our prayer today. If you look at the slide, you'll see on the left a group of normal size average ants. On the right, we have the head of an ant magnified hundreds of times under an electron microscope. Just look at that detail, that that little creature on the left when you get close up to him, as we do here, is an enormously intricate, beautifully made little creature. Isn't that just quite unbelievable, how amazing our God is? Latest Hubble observations estimate that there may be up to two trillion galaxies in the universe. Below is the Milky Way galaxy where our tiny Earth is situated. Astronomers estimate there are about 100,000 million stars in the Milky Way galaxy alone. Can you imagine how many stars there are in true tri two trillion galaxies? Ah, oh, too much for our little brains to near to. So in today's prayer, instead of asking too much of God, I'd like us to use most of the time to praise him and give him thanks. So let us pray. Our most wonderful God of infinite wisdom and creative ability, your eternity stretches from the tiniest detail in microscopic living creatures on earth to the indescribable vastness of the universe with its millions of galaxies and uncountable number of stars. But in spite of the 
conceivable magnitude of your greatness, Lord, you still remain constantly and intimately close, wonderfully accessible, and so abundant with your love for us. You came to walk amongst us in human form through your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who put your laws in our hearts and wrote them so beautifully on our minds through his teachings, and who, sinless and unblemished, died a bodily battered, excruciatingly and humiliatingly drawn out death to save us from our sins and give us eternal life. Where do we begin to find words or perform actions that will adequately display our gratitude and love to and for you? We call out to you to make us more receptive to your voice when you speak to us, Father, so we can respond to you as you would have us do. God, Creator, your love is, is not just reserved for us humans, but it is a vital, universal love that ex extends across all living species. Help us to appreciate and harness this love through respect for all living creatures, both fauna and flora. Help us to stop arrogantly seeing ourselves as the prime inhabitants of this earth and to bow down with love and respect for the other inhabitants of our earth. Your love is there in everything that is good and makes for a better, more balanced, joyful and united world. Almighty God, we praise your name. Thank you that through your Holy Spirit, you enter us and become our life-giving breath, the advocate that guides us when we listen to you in making decisions and performing actions which benefit this world and all who live in it. Almighty Triune God, we praise your name and give you thanks for the endless gifts and blessings you give us throughout our lives. We give thanks for the strength you give us when we are faced with life's challenges. We give thanks for the way in which you answer our prayers, even when we doubt you. We give thanks for stirring us to reach out to others in need, even when it doesn't suit us. We give thanks that in the midst of our anxiety and sadness during these difficult times, you are there as a constant source of love and support in the darkness. You are an integral, wonderful, beautiful, and precious part of our existence. We love you, God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Never, ever let us drift away from you. Amen.